Hey everybody, it is Dak here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my Leviathan guide. The Leviathan is one of the new Desert Treasure 2 bosses. It's often grinded out for that Venator Vestige drop to make the Venator Ring. In this guide, I'm going to be going over the requirements for Leviathan, and then the gear and inventory setup. I'll then go over the travel to Leviathan, and then how the actual boss fight works. And finally, we'll go over the potential loot that you can get from the Leviathan fight. If you've been enjoying the videos, or you're just getting some useful information out of them, be sure to click that like button and subscribe for more content. Uh, I also stream on Twitch which should be linked on the screen and in the description. Thank you very much for the support, everyone. To grind the Leviathan, you do need to complete Desert Treasure 2, though you do have to fight the Leviathan during the quest. Uh, it's a little bit weaker during the quest, but overall the mechanics are the same during and after. I suggest having 80 plus range to kill the Leviathan, but if you're going to grind a lot of kills, getting 90 plus is going to be a very solid boost. You can avoid most of the damage during the fight, so it is possible to kill Leviathan with very low DPS, but it has a lot of health, and rocks fall in the arena, creating permanent walls similar to to like the Muspa fight. Uh, so if you're having a very slow kill, then you don't have that much space to work with. It can be kind of detrimental during the final phase. You will need all of your overhead prayers to survive the fight, so 43 prayer is a minimum. Having 74 prayer and unlocking rigor makes a huge difference for the fight too. Any bonus damage that you can get for yourself is going to make a very big difference in this fight. Let's move over to the gear setup for Leviathan. Leviathan is weak to range, hence the suggested range levels. There's actually a few different setups that are very solid. The Zarite Crossbow and Bofa are best in slot, and then the T-Bow and the Blowpipe are still very good options. Uh, in this section of the guide, I'm going to be going over each gear slot here, talking about all the best in slot options down to the minimum gear that I would use for Leviathan. In your head slot, the Slayer Helm is best in slot as long as you're on a Leviathan Slayer task. Make sure you imbue that Slayer Helm so that it actually works with range, though. Even if you're using that Bow of Ferdinand, uh, the Slayer Helm is going to be best in slot over the Crystal Helm as long as you're on task. The Crystal Helm should still be used if you're just using the Bofa off task, though. If you're not using the Bofa, Masori Mask is your best regular option. After that, the Armadale Helm, then the Blessed Dehyde Coif, which is solid since it's pretty cheap and has a nice range in prayer, Bonus. You could go for the Carol's Coif or as low as a simple Archer's Helm. And also, I'm going to squeeze in the Void Range Helm in there. If you're rocking Elite Void gear and 90 plus range, then Void is still a viable option. In my Budget Gear Hour of Leviathan that I've linked in the description, I do use Void Range gear if you're trying to see some examples with that. The Ava's Assembler is best in slot for your range cape. This does require completing Dragon Slayer 2 and killing Vorkath a maximum of 50 times. Overall, I would say Dragon Slayer 2 and Vorkath are easier to grind than Desert Treasure 2 and the Leviathan, so that shouldn't be that bad of a requirement. If you're not rocking the Assembler, you could still get a kill done with the Ava's Accumulator. The Necklace of Anguish is the best range necklace in the game, specifically since it has a nice range strength bonus on it. After that, I would go for the Amulet of Fury, and then the Amulet of Glory, though it is pretty weak for a range boost. I imagine if you're pushing Leviathan kills, you probably have the money for at least a Fury upgrade. Your ammo slot is going to depend on your weapon, so we can skip over to that. Uh, there's a lot of weapon choices for the Leviathan. The best in slot weapon here is the Zarite Crossbow with Ruby Bolts for, like, maximum speed kills. Uh, if you're using the Zarite Crossbow, you should switch to Diamond Bolts when it does get to lower health, so somewhere from like 250 to 300 health remaining. The Ruby Bolt proc does 20% of the opponent's remaining health, so it can get up to 110 damage with a ZCB. So as the Leviathan gets to lower health, the Ruby Bolts are not as good. The Bofa is a very close second to the ZCB. In fact, at about half health in Leviathan, Bofa is a little bit better DPS at that point than the crossbow, as long as you're wearing full crystal armor, of course. Uh, the Bow Ferdin's nice for getting longer trips compared to the Zarek crossbow, since the crossbow relies on Ruby Bolt procs, which do damage you a little bit. Also, since the crossbow relies on Ruby Bolt procs, the kills can be inconsistent. That averages out over a lot of kills, so the ZCB is better in the long run than the Bofa by a little bit, but I personally prefer the Bofa Leviathan kills over the crossbow leviathan kills the twisted bow is a bit weaker than zcb and bofa here twisted bow scales off of your opponent's magic level and the leviathan's mage level isn't high enough to make the t-bow as good as it is at other ranging bosses that being said the t-bow is still very good here it's not that far behind the bofa for dps you should use dragon arrows if you're using the twisted bow amethyst arrows are not too bad but the dragon arrows are worth the investment the Blowpipe is still pretty solid against the Leviathan. I would use Dragon Darts in the Blowpipe for a boss with this much health, but the Amethyst Darts can still get the job done. I did do a lot of Blowpipe kills early on, and it does pretty well. It can be a little bit more difficult using a weapon with less attack range. Using the Blowpipe does make you stand a little bit closer to the boss during the fight. After that, I would just go down the list of crossbows, like Armor Crossbow, Dragon Crossbow. Those can both use Dragon Bolts still, uh, which are great for DPS. And even the Rune Crossbow and some regular, like Ruby and Diamond Bolts, can get the job done. 
You're only going to need a shield if you're using a one-handed weapon like the crossbow. The twisted buckler is the best in slot range shield with the dragonfire ward being next best. After that, you have the odium ward, which still has a bit of a range strength bonus on it. And then you have the god books. Book of law is the armadil book, and it gives a good range accuracy boost. The unholy book is the zami book. It's a little bit less range, but a nice prayer boost. And then lastly, I would go for a book of balance, which still has some range boost on it. For your chest and legs, you'll want to wear crystal armor if you're using the bofa. Each piece of crystal armor adds damage and accuracy to that bow so the top and bottom are pretty much a requirement if you're not using the bofa masori is the best in slot range gear with arma coming in second even the unfixed masori is going to be better than armadil since it comes with a range strength boost on it uh, overall armadil is really not as good as it is expensive if you're rocking the void range helm then you should be wearing the elite void top and bottom of course carols is a solid setup but i like to use god dehyde since it does have a good prayer bonus and it doesn't degrade in the glove slot zarya van braces are best in slot though they are very expensive expensive just for gloves, so the Barrels gloves are a solid second best option. After that, I would go with Blessed Dehyde Van Braces and then Black Dehyde Van Braces. And of course, if you're using Void, then you'll have to be wearing Void gloves, rather. Best in slot boots for ranging are really not great. Pagasian boots are best in slot, and then Ranger boots are second best, but they're both very expensive for just a small bonus. If you have the money for best in slot ranging boots, then go for it, but in general, you want to buy like all the other upgrades first. Uh, Blessed Dehyde boots are a great third best option, and so much cheaper than the other two. After that, you do have brimstone boots, then Shazian boots, and worst case scenario, you could go for those snake skins. Finally, we have the ring slot. The light bearer is the best option if you're bringing a good special attack weapon. I'll be going over those weapons at the beginning of the inventory section in the guide. Uh, if you're bringing a solid spec weapon like the web weaver bow or the Zarya crossbow, light bearer is easily the best. After that, Venator ring is your best option since it's got solid offensive stats, then an imbued archer's ring. The ring of suffering can be solid, especially with some recoil charges so that it chips away at Leviathan's large health bar. But overall, just a regular archer's ring is really not that bad for a little bit of extra range boost. If you still have any questions about the gear setup, be sure to let me know in the comments section below, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Now let's go over the inventory setup. First of all, I have the Web Weaver Bow. This special attack is insane during the Enraged phase of the fight. The Enraged phase is the toughest part, and two Web Weaver Bow specs kind of get you through that for free. Even if you only have one spec to use, it's going to make that phase a lot better. The next best special attack would be the Zarek Crossbow, but that is very expensive. Uh, the Dark Bow can be a solid spec. At the times that I used it, I found it was kind of underwhelming, so I prefer the Blowpipe spec for a little bit of healing too. Plus, the Blowpipe for just regular hits, not even the specs, is actually one of the best weapons for the enraged phase, so bringing a blowpipe is a solid option. In the rune pouch, I have runes for shadow rush, that would be chaos, death, soul, and air runes. Technically, the shadow spell is not required for the fight, but you're definitely going to want it, and each shadow spell works evenly, so you just can bring the lowest level spell. I do have the Ring of Shadows to teleport to the Scar, and then House Teleports to get out of there when I need to go bank. If you don't have the Teleport for the Leviathan yet on the Ring of Shadows, you're likely going to be using Fairy Rings or some Teleport for the Guardians of the Rift, which does mean that you can just bank at the Guardians of the Rift. I do have a Stamina Potion down here. I often don't need the Stamina, but sometimes I do run out of that Run Energy, and that's really crappy to not have a Stamina when that happens. Back up to the top, we have a Divine Ranging Potion. A regular Ranging Potion is still good, but the Divine Potion keeps your fully boosted for five minutes, which overall is going to be better DPS. I usually go for four super restores. Early in the grind, you're not going to be getting lengthy trips, so you could go like one or two, and eventually as you get better and better, you could just bring even more restores. And then finally, the rest of this is just food. I have a couple of Karam Wands for combo eats and then Manta Rays. You could bring like Ceridome and Brews for potential longer trips. It's really not as efficient to use with Divine Ranging Potions, though. If you have any questions about this inventory setup, be sure to let me know in the comments section below, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Let's talk about how to travel to the boss. The Leviathan is located in the Scar, which is accessed from the Guardians of the Rift minigame, which can be accessed from the basement of the Wizard's Tower south of Draenor Village. The best method of travel is the Ring of Shadows teleport to the Scar. To unlock the teleport, you're going to need to get the Scarred Tablet drop from the Leviathan, which is a 1 in 25 drop. Until you have that Scarred Tablet, I suggest using the Fairy Ring DIS, which takes you to the Wizard's Tower. There is a bank at the Guardians of the Rift, so you don't have to keep your Fairy Ring stuff with you during the Leviathan and whatnot. Uh, if you have done enough Guardians of the Rift, you might have gotten the Tarnished Locket. If you show that Tarnished Locket to Phileas, the Lumbridge Guide, he's going to give you an Amulet of the Eye, which has unlimited teleports to the Guardians of the Rift. There is also a Grouping Teleport, also known as a Minigame Teleport, to the Guardians of the Rift. This can only be used once every 20 minutes, so it's not a great repeatable option, though. 
Now let's talk about how to actually fight the boss. Most of the Leviathan is revolved around just switching your overhead prayers. When the fight starts, the Leviathan's gonna use a series of magic and range attacks spawning from his lure. If you stand too close to the Leviathan, it will bite you with melee damage. So you wanna stay back, which is part of the reason that we're using range. The orbs will be in a random order, but you protect from the projectile as it hits your character, not as the monster is using it. So it's all about just reacting to those orbs that he's throwing at you. The first set of orbs is gonna be very slow. Like I said, only range and magic for now. Green being a range attack and blue being a magic attack. Eventually you are gonna see some orange orbs as well, which you have to protect from melee from, but not during the first couple of strings. After the Leviathan finishes a sequence of attacks, it will roar, causing rocks to fall from the ceiling, including a rock that will always be tossed exactly where you're standing. So you do have to move over one square when he roars. And wherever that rock lands, it's gonna stay in that spot for the rest of the fight. So you're slowly building uh, kind of an arena around you similar to the phantom muspa fight after the roar is done leviathan is going to use its auto attacks again but this string of attacks will be a little bit faster so it'll just keep getting a little bit more complicated and a little bit quicker every time that the leviathan uses a roar and starts a new string of attacks this can get very difficult to deal with but at any point you can just use a shadow spell on the boss to stun him for nine seconds each shadow spell works the same, so you can just use Shadow Rush, but using Shadow Barrage does make you cool. While the Leviathan is stunned, your attacks are going to max out at 10 damage, but if you run all the way around to the back side of him, you hit very hard, and you're going to send that Leviathan into one of two different special attacks, either the Lightning Special or the Smoke Blast, also known as the Debris. He is always going to alternate those special attacks, but the first one is going to be random, similar to like Vorkath special attacks. During the fight, when the Leviathan roars and rocks are falling from the ceiling, you'll notice a couple of random rocks do stay around the arena, not just the one that landed at your feet. If those rocks spawn on the north and south side of the boss, the next special is going to be debris, but if those rocks spawn on the east and west side of the boss, the next special attack will actually be the lightning special. You can also kind of see when the special attack starts, he's moving his head very slowly in the lightning attack, but he moves his head very quickly on the debris attack, and to be honest, I mostly just look at the chat. It, it, right as he uses a special attack, it says in the chat which special attack it's going to be. After the Leviathan is done using a special attack, he will have reset like his sequences down to like the third one that happens. So as the sequence gets a lot faster, if you use a shadow spell on him, deal with one of the special attacks and get back to those sequence of attacks, they will have gotten slower again, making it a lot more possible to flick your prayers. Let's go over how those special attacks work though. The lightning special attack will have the Leviathan spin around slowly while trying to look at you and hit you with a lightning attack. It's gonna burst lightning every tick for like 20 seconds. The Leviathan will also toss some lightning orbs around the room which don't hit quite as hard as those lightning bursts. These orbs will also not land right next to the leviathan so it is safe to just be running around his head up close because he also will not be biting during this phase either. As long as you keep your feet moving the leviathan is not going to catch up to you and you can sneak in some attacks while running around. Early on in the grind it's worth just running around to be safe. Eventually you want to try to running through the lightning sort of skipping over it while still getting attacks in though. The leviathan takes reduced damage during this attack but it's still gonna be a lot faster during the fight overall if you don't ever stop attacking the boss. You can run back and forth along the edge of the Leviathan and get in an attack on each of the corners. If you're using a crossbow or a Tebow, then you gotta run all the way across and attack on these marked squares that I have here. But if you're using the Bofa, you can attack one tick earlier, stopping a little bit before the marked square on one side, uh, and it should still work the same. If you're using a blowpipe, you do want to use these diagonal squares that I have marked instead and basically do the same thing. You click attack, click run, attack, run, attack, run, just every other tick. Uh, this is a lot more click intensive since you're clicking every tick, but once you get the rhythm down, you should be able to do this without taking damage. There is a spot to do this, like similar to Vorkath, where when you attack with the blowpipe, it'll walk you in while you attack. I find that just using these diagonal squares is like the simplest way for me, though. I really like how that works. It's easy to not take damage from the lightning, other than than, like the very first time that you have to turn back and start skipping the lightning you do want to wait until that leviathan lightning is about to hit you before you start running this can be kind of difficult to time at first though it really doesn't matter if you get hit by that first one uh, as long as you start to do the run at any point it's just going to automatically like fall into place timing wise on its own there should be a paste bin for my tile markers linked in the description you can copy those right click on the open full world map button and just import those tile markers as long as you are using rune light 
The other special attack is the Smoke Blast, also known as the Debris. Leviathan's gonna shoot debris at you for the next 10 ticks, similar to like Vorkat's Acid Attack when he starts spitting those fireballs. But the Debris takes two ticks to actually land on you, so that means you can spend two ticks on each square instead of having to constantly move. After the 10 ticks, Leviathan is gonna use a Smoke Blast across the whole arena, which can deal like 70 plus damage. The only way to dodge this attack is to hide behind some of the debris or the rocks around the field that have spawned like during that attack or even from some of the roars earlier in the fight. You can use the squares that I have marked here to kind of keep a bit of a clean setup on the rocks, but you shouldn't have to deal with this special attack more than once per fight, so it's really not that big of a deal if you end up spreading rocks like around the room a little hectically while trying to dodge the spec. Again, once the Leviathan has finished whichever special attack he is using, he will begin using those auto attacks again, but he'll slow himself back down. He won't be right on the same pace that he was at before. Once you get the Leviathan down to 180 health, it is going to go into an enraged phase. His auto attacks are going to go to being two ticks per attack, no matter where you are in the sequence, and it'll only use range and magic attacks. You can also no longer use any shadow spells at this point to stun him. Rocks are also going to be constantly falling from the ceiling, which you can see with the shadows on the ground. There's also going to be an abyssal pathfinder that spawns. It's like this big glowing orb. The orb is going to slowly move around the room clockwise, covering a three by three area at any point. You want to follow this orb around the room. The Leviathan's attacks will do chip damage if you pray correctly from them, but not if you're in the orb's radius. So the only way to take zero damage here is to stay with the orb. Also, all of your attacks are going to have an increased accuracy and increased minimum hit while you're within the orb, making it a lot easier to finish the fight. This is the part of the fight that you want to dump a very good special attack, like that Web Weaver spec, as long as you're standing in the orb's radius. So the Abyssal Pathfinder, aka the orb, is going to spawn on the northwest corner of the arena, unless there's too many like rocks and debris already up in that area. If there's too much debris, it'll spawn northeast instead. If there's too much debris there, it'll keep going clockwise. So it'll spawn southeast, and then potentially southwest. I actually don't know exactly where it'll spawn. If you have rocks just everywhere, it probably would default back to northwest, but you really shouldn't run into that problem. Just during the regular fight, you want to do your best not to drop any rocks in the northwest corner of the arena. That way, you can always be prepared for where that orb is going to spawn once you get Leviathan to 180 or less health. The enraged phase can be pretty intense. Your main focus should be on praying correctly. The Leviathan can hit hard, so any missed overheads can start to make things a little bit sketchy. After that, your priority is to stay within the Pathfinder's range. That way you don't take any chip damage while praying correctly, though at, at the very least, if you had the right overhead on, you're not going to get blasted too hard. At that point, if you're in the orb's radius and you're praying correctly, the only thing that can damage you would be the rocks from the ceiling. So priority number three would be moving your feet to dodge the rocks. And then ironically, your final priority during the enraged phase is actually attacking the boss. Attacking is, of course, required for actually finishing the fight, but if you focus too hard on a attacking the Leviathan, you very well could get yourself killed from all the other stuff, so locking in on protecting yourself before you attack is a good option. Once you get the Leviathan down to zero health, all of the rocks and debris in the room will despawn and it will drop your loot for you. If you still have any questions about the mechanics of the fight, be sure to let me know in the comments section below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, for now, let's show like one full example kill though. All right, we're going to walk up these handholds. I do have my game sounds on. Just You don't really need them for the fight, but they can be super convenient, by the way, for listening to the Leviathan's auto attacks. I'm going to sip that Divine Ranging Potion, and we are off. For the most part, it's pretty boring early on. Nice offensive prayer. Don't forget to turn on your offensive prayer. That's foolish. Uh, it's a bit of a boring fight early on, but once the overheads start to go pretty quick, it can get very intense. The less that you use a shadow spell, the faster your kills are going to be for the most part. Like, using the shadow spell and making the Leviathan use a spec is generally slower than not having to do that. But uh, it's going to be a little bit safer for you for the most part if you... If you're not good enough to, to flick your prayers that fast, I definitely like to use at least like the one shadow spell during the fight. It's kind of nice to get through a fight without using any. Um, I very rarely ever have to use a second, especially like the setup I have right now. Shouldn't really ever have to uh, have to use a second shadow spell, but I'm going to use one right here. I uh, kind of used that a little late, so we still got one attack in there, but I had enough time to get it. I'm going to make sure we do have the rocks on the east and west side, so he's about to lightning attack. I'm going to use a second shadow spell at one point so that we can also get the debris attack going. I'm going to wait till the lightning's about to get to me. I definitely went early there. Oops. Hold on. I'm also running too far, so we can run before we get to that square, like this, because I am using the Bofa. And right now, I'm pretty much just counting to four. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's really, that's all I was doing. 
and I went silent while doing it because counting to four is difficult. So I am going to let him finish up this sequence, and this would be plenty of damage done. Like, I don't have to use another shadow spell to get through this kill, but again, I do want to show at least one example of the debris. Uh, again, also use that shadow spell a little late, just tanking hits out here. Let's, let's ignore that, dude. Pretend I'm perfect at this. I'm going to run over to the side here. And every other time I step, I'm also going to squeeze and attack in. Step out a little and hide behind these rocks. And we're good to go. I could have had my overhead prayer off during that too, but it all kind of got going a little quickly for me. So might as well stay safe instead of messing up the debris. Any hit now, we are going to get the orb. There we go. So I'm going to switch over to this web weaver bow. We're going to stand by this orb, make sure we get the overhead prayers right. I haven't attacked. Oops. I literally have the overhead prayers wrong when I said that. I hadn't attacked yet because I was trying to make sure we're good to go. But as you can see, even just this one spec is going to be fairly thick. That wasn't anything insane for web weaver. So let's send another after we get some overheads flicked. That one was a lot nicer. And we are good to go. So just you could have gotten those two attacks off by like over here, like barely having to move with the protector. But uh, not always will you have a fast enraged phase, so it's nice to be able to just survive during it for the most part. If you're looking for even more example kills, I will have my full hour videos linked in the description. Finally, let's get into the loot that you can get from the Leviathan. First of all, let's talk about the perfect kill. If you manage to kill the Leviathan without taking any unnecessary damage, you'll be given an extra 50% loot. This 50% bonus is only applied to regular drops. It does not affect your chances or the amount of unique drops that you get, and it does not affect the supply drops in the case of the Leviathan. That would be the Sea Turtle and the Prayer Potion drops. Pretty much, if you want a perfect kill, the only damage you can take is like the little damage you get when the Leviathan roars. If you tank any of her auto attacks, including chip damage during the enraged phase or if you tank any damage from the special attacks it does ruin the perfect kill a lot of leviathan's overall profit comes from uniques rather than the regular drops but 50 percent extra loot from a perfect kill is a nice bonus especially if you're landing like rune ore or soul runes or something here are how the unique drops work from the Leviathan. You have a 1 in 96 chance to hit the unique drop table. We are going to come back to this table in just a second. If you don't land that 1 in 96, you then roll a 1 in 53 for an Awakener's Orb. If you don't get that, you roll a 1 in 25 for the Scarred Tablet. That's what you use on the Ring of Shadows to unlock the good teleport. If you already have the Scarred Tablet, you will not even roll for that one. You can't get it a second time. If you haven't hit any rolls yet, you would then roll a 1 in 200 for a Smoke Quartz. If you don't get that, you have a 1 in 5 chance to get the Sea Turtles and Prayer Potions. And otherwise, if you didn't roll any of those, you just get normal loot. If you land that original 1 in 96 for the unique table, then you roll between all of these drops. You have a 3 out of 8 chance for a Chromium Ingot. 3 out of 8 for a Venator Vestige, 1 out of 8 for a Leviathan's Lure, which is the Axe piece, and then finally a 1 in 8 chance for a random piece of Virtus, or in other words, a 1 in 24 chance for a specific piece of Virtus. The Venator Vestige is a little bit strange. You do have to hit the Vestige drop 3 times before you actually get the item. Similar to like a Brimstone Ring from the Hydra, that drops the ring in 3 pieces. In the case of this boss, though, the first two pieces are going to be invisible. You won't actually know when you got them. So it does add up to be about a 1 in 8 chance to actually get the Vestige, making the Vestige just as rare as getting an Axe piece or getting a random piece of Virtus, all being right about a 1 in 768 chance. The average loot from the Leviathan without Uniques is 40k to 60k. A lot of times it is pretty weak, but things like Onyx Bolts and Rune Ore can add up a little bit. The Axe piece is really not worth any money until you get all four pieces, one from each Desert Treasure 2 boss, so we're just going to ignore that for the potential added profit during the Leviathan grind. The average price of the three Virtus pieces is 36.8 mil at the moment at a 1 in 768. That adds about 48k per kill. The Venator Ring has spiked a little bit recently. When I was first setting up to make this guide, they're at about 100 mil. At the moment, you can sell them for about 140 mil, though. At that price tag, that would be about 182k per kill. Even if the Venator Ring was half the price at the moment, it would still be the majority of the profit, though. So getting that Vestige drop is huge. All of those added up are about 270k to 290k GP per kill on average. Your kills per hour are going to vary a lot. Maximum efficiency, you can get like 30k C an hour, but 25 kills in an hour is a reasonable high end to be aiming for. And if you're rocking budget gear and lower stats you can expect more like 15 kills an hour while learning the boss you might be getting a lot of one kill trips you probably die a few times so maybe more like 10 kills an hour early on 10 to 25 kills an hour lands you anywhere from 2.7 to 
1.25 mil an hour in loot. When you subtract the cost of supplies, that could be anywhere from like 2 to 6.75 mil an hour profit. This is all an estimation, of course. That's why there's such a big gap in there. And it really all comes down to getting that Venator Vestige. The Leviathan does have a pet too, the Lil Leviathan. This cool guy is dropped at a 1 in 2500 drop rate. Good luck out there, pet hunters. I think that's everything I wanted to talk about when it comes to the Leviathan fight, everybody. If you still have any questions about the fight or just anything in the guide, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you're looking for more full example kills, I will have a couple full hour videos linked in the description with a lot more examples. Uh, if you enjoyed the content or you just got some useful information out of it, be sure to like and subscribe for even more content. I also stream on Twitch, which should be linked on the screen and in the description. Thank you very much for watching, everyone, and best of luck on your Leviathan grind.